morning, and thank you, and thank you to Barnett for giving me the opportunity to present to you all this morning. I appreciate the time you've taken out of your busy day to join us, and I'm hoping that you'll leave today with a little bit more insight into a quality and risk-based approach to ensuring your TMF is not only of high quality, but certainly inspection ready, because after all, that is the goal of the work that we do, is to get our drugs approved. So just a brief review of our learning objectives this morning. We're going to talk about how you can use risk-based assessment to build your plan for how you conduct your QC activities related to your ETMF. We'll also talk about the various activities that you can use to ensure that high quality TMF. And then towards the end of the session, we're actually going to just talk about some artifacts that over the years my experience has shown that are significant risk for quality issues. So just a little bit about myself. I've been in the industry for over 25 years. I've worked in both large pharma as well as been an industry consultant for the last 10 years. My background is actually in early development initially and then progressing through the different phases of development. The one thing that I've learned along the way through many, many regulatory inspections is that your inspection is truly only as good as your TMS because someone, you can sit at the table and you can talk to the regulator and you can tell them everything you did. But like in anything else, if you don't have the documentation to back it up, then there really isn't any evidence that you did what you said you were going to do. And I'm sure many of us have experienced that scrambling feeling when you're trying to put your hands on something to show to the inspector. And so by ensuring that your TMF is of high quality from the very beginning, you're really preparing for that inspection at, at the start. I've got a fair amount of experience with the TMF reference model in that I chaired the Zone 4 revision of version 3, as well as served on many other committees. And this was a great opportunity for me to put my, my piece in there about my experiences in working with the reference model. We'll talk briefly about the reference model in a few minutes. I also have a pretty fair amount of experience with CFR Part 11 around validation of both clinical systems as well as TMF systems. So I thought we'd start with a definition of, the, of what the TMF is. And this comes from the European Directive 2005. And essentially what your TMF is, it's a standalone set of documentation that really should not require a whole lot of additional explanation from the sponsor or the site staff. And the reason for this is we know that as a study progresses, the team changes. People, very few times do we have an entire team intact from the very beginning of the study to the regulatory inspection. And what you need is a set of records that can tell the story on their own. They can support what actually happened during the study. They can give evidence that the study was conducted in accordance to the requirements of good clinical practice. And it demonstrates the integrity of your data and the compliance with GCP. So what it is, is it's put it all together and you have an output from your functional areas related to the study activities. Now, you're going to hear me talk a lot about functional areas because I noticed that all of you, are, or the majority of you, are from the clinical group, and, and historically the clinical group has owned the TMF, and, and I think today and even going forward, the clinical group for the most part will own the TMF. But all of your functional areas contribute components to the TMF, and so I think as you go back to your organizations and you begin to put processes in place, you need to keep in mind that all members of the functional area are responsible for the quality of the content that they put into the TMF. So when data management's putting in components, they're responsible for the quality of that content. Stats, responsible for the quality of the content. So a lot of this content, as you'll see, falls outside the scope of clinical operations or clinical development. And so I'm gonna make reference to that throughout the day today and, and hopefully give you some ideas as how you can manage to that. 